Today on The Dish, Chef Karen Akunowitz. Born in New Jersey, Akunowitz has been called, has called Boston home for more than two decades, honing her craft in Italy before returning to work in award-winning kitchens like Oleana and Myers and Chang. In 2018, she won the James Beard Award for Best Chef Northeast. The next year, opened her first restaurant, Fox and the Knife, and launched Bar Volpe in 2021. Many of their most beloved recipes can now be found in her new cookbook out this month, Crave, bold recipes that make you want seconds. Although, as I found out, seconds may not be enough. Chef Karen Akunowitz leaves a bit of herself in each dish she creates. It's not necessarily something you see, but it is certainly something you taste. Mm, the spice right away. The sumac. Oh my that God. That citrusy, you know, salinic. <gasps> wow. Take her chicken under a brick. This is kind of a culmination of everything I've learned cooking, really taking all of the flavors and the ingredients and technique, and kind of putting them all into this dish that I love. Then there's her hand-rolled orichetti. We want them to be rustic. We want them to be imperfect because the best things in life are imperfect, right? Once cooked, topped with sausage, chili, chickpeas, and broccoli rabe. Oh my gosh, and the orichetti. This is delicious, spectacular. So when you make this, that is your thumb. Like somebody put their thumb into every single one that we make. Okay. And we're gonna press down with our thumb and we're gonna roll this way, making that little ridge around the side. Okay. That's just a bowl of somebody saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. That's how, that's how I have always <laughs> interpreted it. That love is something diners at Akunowitz's two South Boston restaurants, Fox and the Knife and Bar Volpe, have become accustomed to, not just enjoying the food, but as I found out. Okay, Karen, this is the problem. I'm gonna try to eat everything. <laughs> we, we're on the first thing we're I tasting. I know. Craving it. Her aptly titled cookbook, Crave, features those foods you just can't get enough of. What made you want to put out the recipes? Why not just make everybody have to come here? Because that's, that's the leaving yourself, a little bit of yourself on the, on the plate. This lets me share Recipes not just from these restaurants, but from the last 20 years of my culinary career it's with people all over. Akunowitz shared some favorites from the book with me, along with some dishes just making their mark on restaurant goers, like Bar Volpe's gnocchi with lemon, caviar, and chives. The ricotta gnocchi is like the canvas for the painting. Okay. And you have your lemon and your caviar like you would with any great caviar service something creamy, something caviar, lemon, chives. And it is the book because right now I'm like, I want <laughs> another bite. I don't want to not have that second bite. Yeah. Crave is all about going back for that second bite. And whether that's the texture, the flavor, a contrast in, in temperature, there's always something about it that makes you go back. Oh my God. The farro arancini with black truffle topped with orange blossom honey and Parmigiano Reggiano, a Perfect example. That's the honey. Mm -hmm. Oh. As is the calamari and shrimp fritti misti. We top them with a condiment called bomba calabrese, mm. which is spicy, fermented chili That's and so fennel good. and onions. I have a friend who comes, comes here and eats this dish, and he gets one with his meal, and then he gets one for dessert. <laughs> and that's my favorite thing that's ever happened. Like, mic drop, I couldn't be happier. Akunowitz says those cravings are often rooted in a memory, which I experienced with dessert, a chocolate hazelnut semifredo with whipped meringue. This is like when my Nutella gelato starts to melt a little bit. Yes. That's what that is. Oh my God. Both and I'm walking in Rome. You are really doing exactly what the intention is. That's what this is. I'm gonna say that from now on. It's like giving you walking in Rome vibes. Akunowitz seems to derive as much happiness from watching others eat her creations as we get from devouring them. That emotional connection told in the pages of Crave. The first time you were cooking for mm -hmm. someone. I was trying to get her to go on a date with me. And I said, well, why don't you come over and I'll cook for you. I'll make you dinner. And that. she said, yes. And I said, I can't cook. Right. <laughs> and I went out and I bought a cookbook and I bought a boatload of ingredients, and I made pasta puttanesca. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't know how to cook. 
Um, but what it ignited for me was a true passion and a love for cooking. And to make a dish for somebody and say, here, I made this for you. She started restaurant work at age 17 in a New Jersey diner, a job she referenced more than two decades later when she took home the James Beard Award for Best Chef Northeast. What is a moment like that like for you to get the praise from the community? You're gonna make me cry. I haven't felt that way in years, wow. and, and it, wow. Wow. <laughs> because it is, it's like, yeah, it's I the mean, ultimate. It is the ultimate, and I say this and nobody ever believes me. My spouse said it to me yesterday. It was never a dream that I had because it felt like something that was far too unattainable for someone like me. Someone who now has two restaurants to her name is an award-winning chef, author, and mom. She's the most important thing in my life. I cook for her all the time. Sometimes she likes it. May I please present to you? Oh, just please put that spoon anywhere. The staff will get it for you. Sometimes she does not like it and she throws it on the floor. So that's a lesson in humility. No matter how much love you may have put in it. <laughs> Sometimes she does not care. If you could go back and tell the New Jersey diner you oh my gosh. something, is there something you would tell her, advice you would have given her? Keep going, keep going. Because at every corner, somebody has told me that I couldn't do whatever it was I was going to do. At every corner, somebody has told me I wasn't good enough, that will never happen. And you just keep going even when it feels incredibly hard. And you look for the people that are in your corner and you keep them close. I think you've proven those doubters wrong. <laughs> With this, <laughs> when I was, you have. When I was told <laughs> that a restaurant in South Boston would never, would never work. Really? Yeah. I think you have two now. I think it's, it's working out. I think it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I loved everything about this conversation and the food. So you have wine, yeah. focaccia, and olive oil. Okay. And I want to tell okay. you, the wine and the olive oil are hers. She's worked with artisans in mm -hmm. Italy to create, the wine is like a Sangiovese yeah. Merlot blend. And then this olive oil, which mm. she'll be selling on her website and you can get in, the, in stores in Boston and, and the wine as well. But she wanted, I love this about the mm. wine, she wanted a table wine that was as good as what you'd get in Italy. If you've gone to Italy, you know mm. like the house wine is the best thing and it's better than anything you're getting here. And that's what she's created with all of this. Her love and passion come through in everything, as I can tell from your ooze. It's, it's fantastic. I love when she says, it was never a dream for me oh. because it felt so unattainable. unattainable. I know. And, I yet, know. and, hey, and, and, and yet she did it. And throw those naysayers under the bus. Oh, under well, the bus. you don't want to hurt them, but I mean. No, okay. you can throw them under you the bus. I mean, I mean yeah. metaphorically speaking. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. We're, we're I'm switched. still craving. Let's we're, not advocate <laughs> violence here.